pick the battleground this go round, and indeed they will, and it will be Tomb of the Spider Queen. Some another map that I think they're strong on, but we look at the how this map plays out. It is very small from top to bottom. The lanes are very close. The rotations are quick. This feels like a map where leftovers might get more of that team fighting they're so adept to. I think both of these teams can come away with what they're looking for in terms of how they approach this battleground and strategy. One of the things that really concerned me for Team Freedom is I'm not sure if it was the left leftovers plan, but anytime Team Freedom were separated from each other, they got conquered. So if we see instances where Mopsy is able to find these engagements and split the front line from the back, which is divert the attention of Team Freedom, they'll continue to lose heroes in earlier portions of the team fight. And on a snowball-y battleground like this, that could be trouble. I love when series get to the point where the starting bands have nothing to do with the meta. It's the <laughs> localized meta that develops based on the series. We see the first ban Medivh, first ban Maiev. I absolutely love when series get to this point. And there's another one, <laughs> Sergeant Hammer banned off. Even though, you know, this isn't like the most prominent Sergeant Hammer map. What I do have to say is the fact that Team Freedom, they like Tomb of the Spider Queen. It's one of their highest win rate maps in regular season. We've got the Diablo ban as well. And Urel first picked for the leftovers. For Team Freedom, I think Phoenix has to be considered in the early part of their draft. We haven't seen Hanzo much at all. It seems like as of late, it's something we know Lutano can do well on, but letting Phoenix back over to the side of DAB just seems like that could be the difference maker if he has the proper frontline control. That would be a huge liability. I think they'd be doing themselves a pretty good service to take Phoenix here. Time and time again, we've seen successful compositions use Phoenix as either the primary damage dealer or the secondary. Taking this hero this early in the draft offers a lot of versatility. Deckard Kane as well for Team Freedom just to help control those rotations, have that early game sustain and the massive lockdown with that scroll of ceiling. What is the response for Leftovers? You've got your Muradin available at this point with the no Diablo. I would definitely expect that to come through. I haven't been seeing much Rainer lately, but it's the Murden and the Jaina. Lots Finally. of frontline damage. I've been wondering this entire tournament, where is Jaina? As much Garrosh as we've seen, Jaina is such a foil to that kind of engagement. We've seen Zugrug use that hero a number of times this series, this tournament. Jaina is going to be a nice counter if that's the way they go. Yorel is going to have to set a lot of that up because as nice as it is to have Murden up there, we might even get a Malfurion, except Malfurion just got banned. I say, <laughs> trying to set not. up something allowing multiple blizzards hit for Jaina to be the playmaker pre-16 when you get that route potentially if you do want to go that route. You need more setup options, more CC to lock things down as the blaze is going to be removed by leftovers. But Team Freedom, they have to make the pick. Is it Johanna or is it something else? We saw the Garrosh before. It seems likely that you can get those picks, but will they have the follow-up damage behind it to make those impactful? I think if they go for Garrosh, we're going to be, we're going to be talking about game five. You throw someone out of position, Murden's going to dwarf toss after it. Yorel's going to jump also. Johanna's going to be the get out of jail free card. And as I say that, they lock Ooh. in the garage. And if I'm a fortune teller, Genji. we're not done with this series. We haven't seen much of him, but he's coming through here for Team Freedom. Big playmaking hero. Jaina, obviously an immo immobile backline hero. And before she gets ice blocked, she's definitely susceptible to the dive capabilities of the Genji. What I want to think about here, these last picks, you've got Jaina, you got Murden, you got the lockdown. What are they going to be? As, as far as I would absolutely love to see Rainer and Stu. Okay, perfect. I wanted Stukov to lock down the Garrosh, to lock down that Phoenix when that shows up, but we're going to get the Grey Main instead. Man, there's so much synergy here with the Storm Bolts and the Lurking Arms. I'm really excited about this Leftovers draft. Between the Grey Main or the Jemmy, both of those do well to say, hey, Genji, it's nice. You want to stay back here a little longer? I think not. I think the blow up potential is there with the Grey Main. So playing into their strengths for Leftovers, but Team Freedom, hold on. Any thoughts as the count goes down? I'm not sure. I mean, Leftovers have entirely run away with this draft and it's like oh, a shall phase. suffer. I think we're going to see a good amount of trade value from New York this game because without <laughs> Bunker, without some of these response options, there's just so many high power offense options on the table in Jaina and Grey Main. Leftovers have to feel great about this draft. Kali, you mentioned that immobile backline, which is where Genji shines, but it's also where Leoric shines, and you're over here swinging your skeletal mace or whatever <laughs> it is off camera. Your thoughts on the Leoric, because you got pretty excited there. I mean, I, as soon as I saw the last pick available, and, and yeah, and you have the Phoenix, it, to me, it definitely looked like a Leoric pick. This is one of his better maps as well. You scale him into the late game. You got that Entomb for lockdown onto that immobile backline, as we were talking about. You can even have the Planet Cracker I synergy, was wondering. we absolutely love to see it. And of course, Level 20, buried alive, brilliant talent. Well, we'll see if that gets buried alive and whether we get 
leftovers buried down into that lower bracket. Team Freedom still trying to clutch out one more victory. We're going to go into game number four. So we send it back over to Trixler and Gillyweed. Well, the momentum is there for leftovers, but the Maev is not. They still have Blakitney on Greymane. He showed great Greymane play previous uh, series versus yeah. Zerozara. The mid game is really strong here for leftovers, but I think I agree with the late game and the early game going over to Team Freedom. That Buried Alive is a big deal. Mm -hmm. Also, that Garrosh is always something that you have to worry about in the early game. I mean, you look at the Jaina and her job in the early side for leftovers is to make sure to clear out ways, finish yes. the region glass, and then, of course, go towards level 16. Once she can get the lock down there, or armor reduction, because you look at the Leoric and the Garrosh, and there's a lot to be done there. Yes. Let's introduce our teams in the blue. Blakitney playing Jaina Mopsio on Muradin. Urel playing Pod or Urel played by Pody Boss, linked on Stukov, and DAB will be playing Greymane in the blue, the leftovers. On the right side. Zagrog on Garrosh, Collusion on Deckard, Lutano on Genji, Nazus on Leoric, Yoda on Phoenix. It'll be Team Freedom. Freedom still just one game away, but losing the last game seems to have staunched their momentum yes. somewhat. But now Leftovers with a lot of lockdown, a lot of synergy, and a lot of that set up by the slows of Jaina, just as well as things like being able to get Merc camps with the Greymane. It's a super well-rounded composition, and having the Muradin and the Ural should be able to, hopefully for them, keep someone like Stukov safe. For me, if they're going to need to do it to uh, Team Freedom on the right side, I want to see them win team fights without Medivh being in their composition. I know they're capable of it. We've seen it in the past on online play, but against the Leftovers in Game 3, they looked almost lost. Good news for them is this composition for them is pretty easy to pull off on Team of Spider Queen. You have Genji, of course, they can get those resets coming in. And then, of course, that late game is pretty darn scary. Whereas Leftovers, I'm looking for that level 13. That level 16. Stukov combo, of course, coming online, can focus the target. You have Jaina, the 16 Northern Explosions we've been seeing pretty often, mm -hmm. can blow up tanks. Sotano body blocking Murden. Seeing if he could give a tank blow up to his team. Stormbolt as he was trying to retreat there. Last game, Nazmus did fall victim to some ganks from leftovers, and I'm hoping for freedom's sake that he's able to withstand that. With Jaina coming in and the burst damage that she can do, or the wave clear, and then allow somebody like a Muradin and Greyman to rotate, he could be under fire a lot. Team Freedom showing some adjustments already with Nazmus using that Rage Walk, but they also have Yoda to come down and say, okay, if you're going to focus our bottom laner, we're going to have our counter ganks available. Yoda is willing to trade out some of that damage. Now, Leftover show four in the bottom lane, indicating that we might see them make a play for those Giants or that Night Camp on the early side, which is something that you see a little bit in Europe. Jaina, in particular, great at clearing out Night Camp, so we should see that. And already, Lutano's aware of that. You saw Genji on the minimap in the bottom left. Head over there and check it out. He wants to make sure nothing gets snuck away. Or if nothing else, if that gets started, send himself or Yoda, someone over there to make mm -hmm. sure that they're getting them at the same time because that mercenary camp in the mid, having the bruisers gives you so much control over the rotations between the two turning points. And as teams start gearing up for their first web weavers, that can be a boon to have because you can rotate between the two. Great silence after the fact. And down goes Tono. Phoenix. Oh my gosh, he almost got the kill there on DAB. Momsio taking the shurikens and making sure one did not connect there with the kill. But a big shame between the two. You see how strong Murder can be against Phoenix. That hitbox is so large, you can land a storm bolt. And Yoda almost got away, but the immediate follow-up from Stukov to silence him, make sure that he was stuck in mm -hmm. place, being slowed with a little too much, and Team Freedom loses one. Yeah, he's Yoda's going to need to be quick on the uptake, like we saw Lutano be with his Sergeant Hammer. Well. That's a dead mob seal. That happens. Goodbye. That does happen. That does happen. He needs to be quick on the uptake, though, with his warps. When he sees that he's going to be the target, because if he gets hit by a stun with a silence underneath root later, warp is not going to happen. No, it will not. That'll be something that he'll have to worry about later on, and maybe even here in the early game, as you see a kill already coming in from them, especially after level 7. Whenever you have that... Uh, give him the axe. Come online at level seven for yeah. Murden. Suddenly more damage is coming in. Murden by himself with a storm bolt with the perfect storm finishing up after he gets a few stacks and a couple of auto attacks can shred your shield. If you have any additional damage come in, like a Grayman with go for the throat later on, that is a dead Phoenix at all times, and that will be the primary focus for the leftovers. Team Freedom on their side, they have protection though. Level four comes online for Decker Kane, so he has a shield available to make sure that Yoda can get away from the fight. Yes, and another saving grace for Freedom into the frame at seven mm. with Garrosh too. So if the 
continued focus for Leftovers seems to be to bypass that Garrosh and go straight for Phoenix as long as they have into the fray. Even if uh, some, there's a slow or anything like that on uh, Garrosh, you get Indomitable and use it into the fray to get Phoenix out of the tough spot. Now, with Momcio dying in the middle lane, they actually lost some gems. So Team Freedom is ahead in the gem exchange. In fact, they've got a turn in. 40 already dropped off, and they have the additional 10. Looking to get level 7, and Leftovers realize, okay, they're trying to go for a turn in here, and they're watching the turn in points as much as they can. Nasmus goes for it. Will he be able to get it? No. DAB shows up just in time to stop him from doing so. He has a big bulk having those 12. Nobody's stepping back from Team Freedom yet to get those bruisers, which have already been cleared out from Leftovers. We may see them try to do that. Not now, though, likely, because Leftovers are uh, also could have tried to get the uh, turn-in. So instead, Team Freedom will get the first turn-in of the game. Now we'll see how much they can do with it. Oh, sadly, no Knight can't come in for Leftovers to help up the defense. They will lose some turrets here. Should it use a lose a fort? You have pretty good wave clear between Jaina, Stukov, and Greymane. Team Freedom will look to push the issue, obviously, and get as much as they can. But this gives you a little bit of experience, Jump. Might get up to level eight, eight and a half, but Leftovers have their own answer back afterwards if they get to turn in. The second turn in is usually the dead one. Dugro goes in for Momcio, gets a nice little toss, and Momcio hops out. Later on, if he can have Taunt there, might be enough to get the kill. Silence is insane, as Lutano takes a heap of damage before he can get out, use Deflect. Still putting in the harassment toward Mopsio, is gonna force him all the way up. Nazma staying in the bottom, and Podiboss doing what he can to defend versus this Webweaver. This is gonna jump Freedom back up in damage. Another combo, this time on D.A.B., but zoning Silence, that he can get back. Able to get back, turns his attention to the Webweaver. That will get cleared up. Jane already working on the middle lane. Middle lane? a little bit more of a push than I thought it would as Phoenix and Garrosh head on over and they're looking to get a forge. Should it be able to get it with Urel? Uh, maybe be rotating in here from the bottom lane as the Orc is working on pushing that in. So Phoenix is heading down there. But Leftovers lose a little bit more than I thought they would. Yeah, Team Freedom are very good at setting up lanes. I feel like that's why they have become so good on Tomb of the Spider Queen, is setting up the lanes prior to the Web Weavers. Leftovers were doing their best to mitigate that, but still having the split push and having heroes like Phoenix who can warp out from that, and then uh, just keeping up the push in multiple lanes got them quite a lot. But it's not a lot that they are super close to 10 where they can try to stave off. Not without a fight. Leftovers are more than happy to take that fight because they want to get the stop and they want to get Web Weavers, and they will do so. They get the Web Weavers, but they need to get away now. DAB is getting low on health. Blizzard's dropped down. Nazus goes for the chase. He gets the last auto attack. Body Boss tries to turn around and get his own damage out. But Team Freedom able to secure a kill, and it comes at a great time. They're about to hit level 10, which will make their defense against the Web Weavers coming in from Leftovers easier to defend. Yeah, that's Greymane. That's the person that does a ton of siege damage once he gets into Worgen form on the towers. And with that, and with 10 so close for Freedom, it's basically a free clear. Leftovers were hasty. They, they knew that if they had to deal with a double turn in phase with the heroic abilities too, it was worst case scenario. So they did get those in, but now things are falling apart for them as Team Freedom get another kill as X-Strike blows up Jaina. Potty Boss is able to grab the gym Wait. though. Oh no, Stukov caught in the middle as Team Freedom are just bringing the kills in. Four to one so far, still having 10, and they stopped the waves from pushing in. Top lane gets some damage on that top right corner, but nothing too hasty. But this was expected. We thought Team Freedom would have a strong early game. You have the Garrosh Roads, you have the ability for Genji to go in for those resets. Leftovers are about to hit 10 themselves. And that's when this composition comes online. Definitely the most unfortunate thing is the loss of gems, both in the turn-in that really just didn't do much of anything, and in the gems that were lost off of that last kill. But Leftovers aren't out of it yet, not by a long shot. No forts have gone down, though Team Freedom, if they can get Web Weavers and if they can get a strong push in multiple lanes, with so many forts low, they can look to try to get a bunch of them with one sweeping strike. Look at this, though, Ring of Frost. Were you expecting this? Were you expecting Water Elemental, which is often what we see versus Garrosh? In North America, yeah, we do see a lot of Water Elemental, but we've been having more and more Ring of Frost. We've had it for now almost the entire first phase, uh, phase one, and then phase two, we've had double between the two of them. Okay. But the Ring of Frost is really easy to follow up on top of a Stukov route or Emerge and Stormbolt. The idea is you blow up one target, if you can catch more, great. And with you moving into this Q build that's coming online from Jaina, it's very easy to hit multiple melees. Phoenix, although he is a range, he's usually a melee range too, so you get that extra pierce coming in there to bring in the damage, and we're looking for leftovers to blow up a target. Well, we'll see if Team Freedom can use things like X-Strike, like Wraithwalk, the Warp, Indomitable to avoid those, and of course into the fray, which hasn't been forced too much so far in this game. 
As uh, since Team Freedom got their web weavers, they have had control of this game. 46 gems, though, turned in more so for the leftovers than Team Freedom. Freedom trying to play this patiently, knowing that they are the ones with the level lead. And a level one quest done for Jaina. Giving her a little bit more damage and of course that region. Zug Rug going for a toss with Mopsia, but Mopsia has different plans here. He's looking for Yoda. He lands a storm bolt. Pony Boss also came down. Here's the sounds, but Yoda sneaks out thanks to Collusion and to stay a while and listen. It was excellently done because Zug Rug was done Win. the way Ring of Frost does not hit anybody, and this may be the key for Team Freedom to get back in. Indomitable, Garrosh is being poked down slowly, but surely Blick Kidney with that Jaina, but potions over the wall will keep him alive. Keep them alive, but leftovers have to back up. They miss that Ring of Frost, they miss that blow up potential, and now they have to deal with the Web Weavers that are coming in from Team Freedom. And Team Freedom, the story of this game is every time they've grabbed Web Weavers, they're about to hit a talent advantage. And the same holds true here. They're about to hit level 13, and they have forts to take down. Continuing to put the pressure onto the members of Leftovers, though, Herodric Cube keeps the slow going on Mopsio. We have Warlords Challenge till 20 seconds out. With X Strike, Lutano backs out. Leftovers are keeping the defense going in this top lane, but at the cost of the mid and the bottom. With a free push of those Web Weavers from Team Freedom, now they get 13. Now the Entomb hits. DAB tries to jump in, but it's blown up by Freedom. Massive Entomb there, right in the middle of the disengage happening for DAB. He got locked into a huh? corner, and Mobsio gets locked down too. Big taunt coming out, and Team Freedom will take two. So they get two forts, and they're looking for a third fort. They are jumping up in experience. Yeah, awesome by them that they knew they could hang around. They could force Leftovers to stay in this top. This top lane is so crucial on Tomb because it's the boss lane. And have the slow push of the Web Weavers on their own because those forts were already so low. A triple fort play now made stronger as Team Freedom head to the boss. Leftovers are hurting. They're about to hit level 13. Big power spike for both Murden and Stuka. That should help them out. Also, Icy Bane's coming online for Dana will allow her to see the way and add on to those damage numbers. But Team Freedom, they don't want to stop the steamroll here. They grab a boss as well to push on the top. A lot of times when you know your opponents are very likely to go to boss, you get into positions so that you can quickly turn in. But without 13 here, Leftovers cautious approaching this game, knowing that this is the possible last game of the series. If they lose this one, they're dropping down to the lower bracket. So they send out Jaina to pick up the Giants at the bottom. A couple of Team Freedom are around here to harass. They know someone else had to be there because they got the Giants. But Jaina makes it out okay. Her thing back to level lead for Team Freedom as Leftovers clear out the boss. I, I like that you bring up being cautious, but caution can only bring you so far, especially when you don't have as many gems available for your turn-ins. Typically, if you see multiple turn-ins happen for one team, the other team has at least banked a lot of gems, so they have that comeback potential. There's only 30 here for the Leftovers. These deaths have actually cost them quite dramatically. Yes. So they may have to take that caution and start to burn down their opponent and force these fights. They gotta land this Ring of Frost combo, and they gotta do it soon. You're saying to throw it to the wind. Throw it to the wind! As Zugrub pops the Indomitable, pulls away, Yoda steps up, gets some damage in. Leftovers are trying desperately to get this turn in, but Team Freedom is on the cusp of level 16. If they get that turn in, 16 would be here for Freedom, and it may be another fight that they walk away a win. 16 now here, and Taunt was used from that, making it out alive from that is a welcome win for Leftovers, but they still don't get the gems and they still can't reprieve the pressure that Team Freedom is putting on them in multiple lanes. And the problem is Team Freedom is a couple of gems away from having enough to go for the third turn in of the game. And once they do, look at that bottom lane. That keep wall is busted. That means this keep can fall too. 16 to 13, Team Freedom is in a commanding lead. If Leftovers get a fight that goes in their favor, they can come back, but it is getting worse for them. And remember, they lose this one, they're going to lose this bracket. This is the one point on Tomb of the Spider Queen that sometimes I worry about Team Freedom. Will they push their advantage? It can be scary trying to threaten keeps against things like the Urel to throw you in, Ring of Frost too. And of course, the silence is from Stukov. They need to do that though. They've used the gym. Stormbolt hits. Nazbus in a whole lot of trouble. He is inside the Ring of Frost, but he's taken so much damage. He dies anyway. Leftovers are bringing the fight to Team Freedom. 16 be darned. Mops is about to have another Stormbolt. He jumps in. He's looking at Collusion. Can he land it? He does. DAB goes in afterwards. Go for the damage. Salvo comes out as DAB tries to get back, but Deck King will still fall. Big X strike coming out from Latano, but will it be enough? Taunt pulls back Muradin just as he was hoping to dive out of the fight. Freedom. Gets a counter kill. Nasmus will be back shortly. Web Weavers this whole time been threatening keep towers. They get them in the mid along with the Bruiser camp there in the top is where Team Freedom wants to make the rotation. Keep towers are already down there. 
The Leftovers are hoping to clear it out before Freedom can mobilize in this top lane. Remember, there are still people down. There's no support, but they find a combo. They execute DAB. Zagrug finds a combo, tosses them back, and now with a 35-second death timer for the Wolf to be back, and that gives Team Freedom the time necessary to put some damage on this keep in the top lane. And the bottom, we have a Web Weaver already sieging upon that keep. Team Freedom is okay with having two keeps that are bruised and battered, but if they can get more, they would love to push for it. Well, they see Jaina there. Decker Kane starting to come up. Hody Boss comes in again, thrown back, doing what they can to keep this Hammer Squad off of Yoda, who wants to keep the damage going. Lutano, too, with the poke. They don't get this keep. Leftovers save their keep. There is no catapult pressure. But man, Trixler, is that keep low. They're bleeding. They're it's, gonna go back again. They've stopped the bleeding for the moment. But as you mentioned, Team Freedom wants to keep and they get it right before 16 hits. Mopsio jumps over the wall though. He knows this team's about to get 16 and they'll run into the fight here. He gets taunted down. He's low on help. Can Mopsio get out? No. Here comes the Ring of Frost, but it's not enough. Like Kitty's in the back all by himself and he gets destroyed by Nazmus. Shot down with the Purification Salvo and the rest of Team Freedom now. Gets a double kill, but leftovers are all in on this fight now. Link to the back, silencing, but Yoda and Lutano chase down DAB, claiming another life. 11 kills to three, and Team Freedom already having this keep down are going for game. They're going for game and another kill. They find Link two, and Team Freedom looks towards the core. North America wanting to move on to the winner's finals, and it looks like they may have been able to achieve it here. Leftovers unable to keep up with Team Freedom and their early games, taking the Tuma as Fighter Queen, and they shut him down in macro play. Multiple Web we return ins. Team Freedom has done it. They win three to one. And after two series defeating Europe on Tomb of the Spider Queen, Team Freedom have proven that they too can play this map just as dominantly. Well done. I am impressed by them. Honestly, after game one and game number two, they shut down Leftover so well with the Indeed. It seemed like a real style clash that Leftovers were able to overcome. And after game number three, I was wondering, does Team Freedom have much more underneath them? They show the answer here on the Spider Queen. They played the macro game well. Lutano and Genji able to find those kills. And Yoda, despite getting picked once on the Phoenix, really answered up for damage for his team. They kept the steam going. You know, we talked about Tempo Storm being a momentum-based team. And momentum is wonderful for any team and what it can do. But Team Freedom has an atmosphere and environment where they don't let those kinds of things rattle them. Yeah, they did at the last Western Clash, but a lot of that was about cockiness, as they said. Here, it's a lot more about just maintaining that calm, and that is what brought them all the way to the winner's finals versus Dignitas tomorrow. I'm glad that you're bringing up that level-headed approach, because we saw that on BOE. Some compositions like that, when you have to be disciplined, you can get a little bit edgy. You try to push forward, maybe get a little bit more damage than you should, but Team Freedom remained disciplined for a 25-minute game with a Sergeant Hammer composition, and that requires a level-headed play style. And they are displaying it right now, so now they get to make it to Sunday, which is great for them, and a big boost for them, because they thought at the last Western Clash, they would get that far, and they got stomped out early. Getting this far is showing this team growing. Huge congratulations to Team Freedom, and Lutano, who's at our analyst desk for an interview. That's right, I have the winner here, Lutano. Probably the best smile in all of Heroes here. There it is, <laughs> Lutano. You hear the noise here. This is far a cry from Poland. How does it feel right now? It feels freaking amazing. It's, uh, it's awesome. We're top three, guaranteed, so that's great. Obviously, you guys had the suffer to suffer through the defeats at Poland, and everybody's like, wait a minute, what happened to this team? When we talked to you guys the other day, you said, you know, we were in a funk after that, and you come in here with a different mindset, a different mentality. Now that you've gotten through day two, you know that you're in that top three position. Obviously, you got Dignitas later, but now that you're here, I mean, do expectations start to come back for this team? No. <laughs> we're, we're just winning on accident, man. We, we have no <laughs> idea what's going on. We're just... <laughs> yeah, uh, Playing against Dig, it's it's gonna be really tough. They, as we said earlier, they uh, they bodied us in scrims. We learned as much as we could, and we've been uh, implementing it in all of our games. So it's, uh, we're just gonna keep working on that, and hopefully we can beat them with their own stuff. Well, the implementation obviously starting to show, and then starting to get it banned out. So obviously, there's a lot to look forward to when that series comes in. Kala, your your team entering into this series, you know, looking at the leftovers and considering the fact that you've got some pretty smart players on your team, were you guys trying to stay away from team fights? Were you trying to build macro comps? Because that's what it looked like to us, and honestly, it looked like one of the most effective strategies against the leftovers. Can you talk to us about maybe what your guys' overall strategy was for going against this team? Uh, our strategy was Mopsio does not get Diablo. <laughs> <laughs> and that was it. Okay. Uh, 
Realistically speaking, uh, they we looked at their statistics and they played 22 heroes throughout all of the first phase. That's all they played. And we were like, these guys have a weak hero pool, and that's what we look to punish. Right on, thank you. Yesterday there was a quote we heard, sometimes you lose, sometimes you play in a. What would you have to say to that now? I mean, he's a memer. I love memers. It's a... It's nice, it's nice to beat him up, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lutano, one of the other things that we heard from you guys the other day, I asked Zugrug in particular, was you guys, this all of a sudden you started to change the way that you play. You started to get more of those team fights. You started looking for more of those. And you've also had more of a voice in this. When you get the energy from a home crowd here, does it kind of, you say, all right, let's go in maybe more. Do you have to dial it back ever? What's the energy like now that you feel the taste of victory, the feeling of the crowd cheering you on every single time you guys are getting a kill, this place is erupting. I mean, our, our strategy is always, we try to be as calculated as possible. And uh, it's kind of hard to hold that back when the crowd is cheering for us, so. <laughs> Thanks though, guys, you're awesome. <laughs> Things looking good so far for this team, but we have not yet been completed. We have a lot more to go for you today. For now, we're gonna go to a commercial break, and when we come back, we will have more from the Western Clash. In the middle lane, but Team Freedom has set up a trap. Yeah, Freedom wanted to go after Mopsio, saw where he was at due to the Medivh. Now Maev is in the thick of things, though, with the tether being connected. Steel Kitty still has escape options, uses Vault to teleport away. DAB over the wall, though. Maev gets a kill, or take is a kill, and DAB can't get out of here. Team Freedom gets a double kill. Wait, he carry can get away. Linked was the one who was thrown away, kicked away. Now the rest of the team wants to turn on him, but this Blood Kidney get a monstrous Warden's Cage. Purification South is going to follow that up, though, and the Poly Bomb is just going back and forth, shared between all of Leftovers. Somehow they are living for a long time, two for one for Leftovers so far. Poly Bomb can continue. Can he turn around the Death Potion here? Ooh, now this comes over the Dragon. Poly Bomb might actually fall. The Tano continues to spray out the auto attacks. Link stepping forward, Bridget? but he's got nothing here. It's only Ooh. DAB against three, and he has to escape. Forget about things like Giant Killer coming online for Sergeant Hammer. Suddenly, Gold Dan has had a difficult time already. Is it, or uh, Garrosh is still an issue. Big fight happening here in top of the corner. Earthquake and Bunker being used. Salvo, too, Leyland. as Nautilus jumps in. Leyland went in. The Salvo starting to pepper in the damage with that taunt. Now, Muradin takes the heal back up from the Ancestral. Thought that might be scary with that. Lutano's positioning oh my. is enough that they get that first kill on Phoenix. They're looking for more. The double stun, the jump on top from Nazmus. Chasing down Mopsio on the right. Chasing down another person on the left. Linked now in danger as he's thrown into the wall. Dodges the storm ball, but it will be all for naught. Fight before 16, but if this goes wrong and they lose people, then they're gonna be losing the protector and a whole lot more because of it. Tether hits. Team Freedom split apart now. It hits a taunt, but Zugrug in a lot of danger. Dives into the bunker, comes out, and dies to Phoenix. Mopsio is catching the attention of the back line. That leads the left to leftovers to focus on the front line. Out. Leftovers are keeping the defense going in this top lane, but at the cost of the mid and the bottom. With a free push of those web weavers from Team Freedom, now they get 13. Now the Entomb hits. DAB tries to jump in, but it's blown up by Freedom. Massive Entomb there, right in the middle of the disengage happening for DAB. He got locked into a huh? corner, and Mafio gets locked down too, right before 16 hits. Mafio jumps over the wall, though. He knows this team's about to get 16, and they'll run into the fight here. He gets taunted down. He's low on help. Can Mafio get Get out, no. Here comes the Ring of Frost, but it's not enough. Like Kitty's in the back all by himself, and he gets destroyed by Nazmus. Shot down with the Purification Salvo and the rest of Team Freedom now. Gets a double kill, but Leftovers are all in on this fight now. Link to the back, silencing, but Yoda and Lutano chase down DAB, claiming another life. 